I'm going live. Hi friends. My name is Gina and I have been on Manjaro. Um, I started taking it 14 weeks ago and I have a Manjaro journey playlist. So you can see this tomorrow right here. And I mentioned during my live last week how wonderful the Atomic Habit book by James Clear is. It is absolutely amazing. When I read this for the first time, I read it about three years ago when I was on a weight loss journey. And it's not a weight loss book per se, but it can really help you big time in lots of areas of your life, including if you're on a healthy lifestyle journey, it'll help you with that too, because it's so important to be able to do little habits, little tiny habits that if you try to improve at least 1%, that 1% can compound daily to be a giant difference and can make such a huge difference in your life. Now, I see that I have three people so far that have caught me live. If you could please type in the chat, if you can hear me, I'm using a new internet provider. This is my second time trying it while doing a live. I was also trying to try to use uh, StreamYard and Jeff and I were trying to figure out how to put it together and um, we weren't able to get StreamYard going this week, but maybe next week with our next one, we'll be able to. But I want this to be interactive and engaging. Those of you who've had an opportunity to pick up the Atomic Habits book and read through chapter one, let me know that in the chat too. Oh, good. Robin says it sounds beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Robin. Um, nice and clear here. Great. Great. Okay. Um, this book, I had mentioned to people to go ahead and read the first chapter of Atomic Habits, and we would discuss it on Sundays. Uh, we'll do one chapter each week. And I noticed I didn't mention about reading the intro, but the intro is really amazing how James Clear was able to make a huge difference in his life trying to just improve himself 1% at a time, doing small habits that build on top of each other and can make a huge difference. Now, a lot of you, um, uh, a lot of uh, people that watch have been watching my channel recently know that I've been taking Manjaro, which is the same thing as ZepBound. I have type 2 diabetes and Manjaro and ZepBound, there's a shortage right now and it's really hard to get it. This week I had a surgery done because I've had some uh, postmenopausal bleeding. And so I had to have a surgery done where... Um, uh, some polyps and uh, some uterine polyps and fibroids were taken out and are going to be sent to a lab to make sure I don't have cancer. So it's been a really, uh, a very eventful week. The surgery went just fine and I'll know in a couple of weeks how it turns out and I'll let you know that too. But I couldn't take my Manjaro shot on Monday. I, I take my shot usually on Mondays. I take my shot live on my Anchor Moments channel, and I do that every week, and I share what uh, weight loss I've had and any side effects that I've had and things that I have found that help me with losing weight while on Manjaro or help me with constipation, which is the one side of my surgery. I was thinking that I would go home and take my my five milligram Manjaro shot, but the nurse talked to my husband after my surgery and said, Gina mentioned that the only side effect she has with Manjaro is constipation and being under anesthesia, anesthesia gives you horrible constipation. So she probably should wait until this coming Monday to take her next shot. 
And so that means that I have had, uh-oh, uh, Robin said that I froze again. Oh, darn it. Robin, if you can let me know if I stopped freezing, shoot. <sighs> well, uh, let me know. I, I have five people watching right now. If any of the five of you can hear me, please type in the chat that you can hear me. I'm going to be really watching my chat today. Oh, good. Robin says it's better now. Oh, good. I'm really going to be watching the chat today because this is going to be an interactive video. And so especially for those of you who've had the opportunity to read the first uh, first chat, I mean, first chat, the first chapter. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. She says all is good, too. Thank you so much. If you've had an opportunity to read the first chapter, oh my gosh, it's amazing. If you don't have this book yet and you'd like uh, like to get it, you can get it at bookstores as well as Amazon. It was um, a number one bestseller on New York Times for a long, uh, for quite a while. It is crazy fabulous. Uh, so you can hear what we talk about and then still get the book because you're going to really want it, especially if you're on Manjaro or Zepbound during the shortage. I now, it's been, it'll be two weeks tomorrow since I've had my Manjaro five milligram shot. And I will tell you, my hunger came back. Uh, the first, when I'm on Manjaro, it's wonderful. I don't have food noise where I'm thinking about food all the time and my stomach doesn't grumble. But I'll tell you what, Thursday morning when I woke up, well, I hardly slept Wednesday night into Thursday morning. But I had this weird sensation in my stomach, this burning sensation, like, what is that? Oh, my gosh, I'm hungry. <laughs> and, and Thursday morning, Friday morning, Saturday morning, this morning, I'm waking up and my stomach burns because I'm hungry. And when I take my shot once a week, I don't have that hunger. When I wake up in the morning, I'm not hungry. There is no burning sensation in my stomach. I still eat breakfast, but I can wait a couple hours before I breakfast. A lot of times I'll have a cup of coffee first and then um, with a little bit of uh, protein uh, protein drink in it um, as my creamer. And then, um, you know, and then a couple hours after that, I'll have a high fiber cereal or some yogurt. Um, but it's not a big hurry because I'm not feeling a lot of hunger. Well, let me tell you, I have felt a lot of hunger from Thursday through Sunday. And so I need some good atomic habits in my life. So that way, if it happens and I can't get my shots, because a lot of you are having a hard time getting your shots. I know at the Costco pharmacy I went to, I was able to get, oh my gosh, last week I was able to get another box of four, five milligram shots. And I asked him at Costco, how did you get this for me? And they said, well, Gina, it, you're just so lucky that you wanted five milligrams. We check every single day and they were able to grab one box of five milligram for me. And if I had switched to seven and a half, 10, 12 and a half or 15 milligrams, they wouldn't have been able to find the shot for me because um, all of those are sold out in the Arizona area at the moment. Uh, so anyway, it's it's been really tricky. But if we have some good atomic habits in place, some nice process in place, it'll help us. It'll help us. Uh, and it'll help in, in other areas of your life, too. Now, if someone can write on here. Um, oh, thanks. Taz the Bulldog says he's glad I'm on the mend. Yes, I am feeling good. Uh, just a little more tired than I usually am, but uh, but not too bad. Not too bad. And I'm just very hopeful that the labs are going to come back just fine. But if they don't... Um, I'm just going to live each day at a time and do whatever it takes to, to get healthy because I'm going to be a grandma. And one of my friends came over today, a step backwards, and she gave me this, this new grandma shirt. I'm so excited. Uh, this is my first shirt about being a grandma, and my grandbaby is due at the end of June, which is kind of exciting, too. Okay. Um Tess, the bulldog, life with the bulldog says, it took me a bit to get my seven and a half. I'm also in Arizona. Oh my gosh, maybe sometime we can meet up. I'm um, your Taz's mommy. Aw, I love dogs. 
very cool. Maybe I'll get to meet Taz someday. That would be awesome. Okay, did anybody here read um, the intro and the first chapter? And if you did, any thoughts you have, put it in the chat. And I'm going to be looking at the chat uh, so that way I can share I can share your thoughts. This is what I do want to share. If you didn't get a chance to read the intro, because I just said read chapter one, but oh my gosh, the intro chapter before chapter one, amazing. When James Clear was in high school, he was a baseball player and he loved playing baseball. He'd been playing baseball since he was an itty bitty little boy and he was really good at it. Well, a baseball bat hit him in the face and he almost died. He could have bled to death. Uh, his coach had to walk him very slowly from the field all the way to the um, to the school to, and get um, uh, call 911 and, and have him taken to the hospital. It was terrible. One of his eyeballs even fell out and uh, they had to kind of. Uh, try to get it back in and said it was it would take a while before it would finally um, insert back into his head. It was super crazy awful. And he was a freshman when that happened. And I believe a freshman. And then he couldn't um, play varsity when it was time to play varsity. It was devastating. It had given him some traumatic brain injury and things. But he worked on some things a little bit each day, including lifting weights. And he lifted weights and lifted a little bit more and a little bit heavier each day. And he kept building up. Eventually, he did get invited to, um, to play at the college level and to be able to play baseball. And he was so excited. And he decided his freshman year that he was going to um, go to bed early every night because he knew rest was super important for him. And so just by going to bed a little bit earlier every night, while his other friends on the team, they were going out drinking, having fun, chasing girls probably, you know, having a, a good college time. He was like, he really wanted to play on the varsity level team. He, he, he wanted that, he had that huge goal, but he used small, processes to make things better for him. And one thing he did is going to bed early. Another thing he did, he tried to eat healthy. Um, he lifted weights. He, he did a lot of little things and those little things added up. He made sure he got all this homework done on time. And all of that added up where by the senior year, he won um, awards for being um, a scholar athlete. He got to play on the, um, on the varsity team. He made such huge growth for doing little things that he made a habit that he did all the time. And it was huge for him. Later, he started a, a newsletter and he had just a few people read his news newsletter. And before you know it, he had like a half a million people subscribing to his newsletter on how he created using little teeny tiny habits that compound on top of each other till before you know it, it makes a huge difference in your life. And then he started getting invited to be um, keynote speaker and all these wonderful things. And that's how he started Atomic Habits. Um, and Chapter one, does anyone have anything to say about chapter one and their thoughts on it? Has anyone here, I have 15 people on right now, yay. Did anybody get a chance to read chapter one? And do you have any thoughts? I'm gonna give you an opportunity to say your thought first. And if I don't get one, you know, I'm always full of thoughts and I'll, I'll share some of my thoughts with you. But I can tell you right now, while I'm waiting for, for some of you to, do you have Monday Live? Yes, I do um, Manjaro Mondays live and I'll do a live again tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll give you my shot and I'll let you know if I lost any weight this week. I don't know because I didn't get to take my shot this week because of my surgery. Uh, so we'll find out. 
But um, I'll still be doing my Manjaro Monday live tomorrow and I'll be able to give myself my shot again tomorrow. Yay. For um, today, I will we'll tell you the first 13 weeks I've lost 18 pounds is, is been my journey so far. And I have type two diabetes. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm not seeing anyone write about a, or put in anything so far about atomic habits. That's okay. Uh, once Oh, wait, maybe Jamie's done something. Hi, I'm new here. I have had that book on my list to read for a while. It's so good. Um, today was shot day for me. Week number five, and I'm down 10 pounds. Wow, that's so awesome. One to two pounds a week is what uh, nutritionists say is really the best. Uh, that is so great. Oh, yay. Kari says she finished chapter one last night. I liked it. The else, the ice melting analogy. Oh, my gosh, Kari. Yes. Okay. So for those of you who haven't had a chance to read it yet, oh my goodness. He also talks in chapter one about um, sometimes you're doing something and you're, you're working on your process. You're, you're trying to make a good, uh, you're trying to make a good habit and you don't see anything and you don't see any change and you don't see any change. And you don't see any change. And then all of a sudden, boom, change. And he described it like an ice cube. If you put an ice cube on a table and you're sitting in a cooler, like a, a, a frozen meat cooler, and you put an ice cube on a table in front of you, at 25 degrees in that cooler, that ice cube stays the same. Then if you raise it up a degree and it's 26 degrees in that cooler, still just an ice cube hasn't changed at all. Then 27 degrees, then 28 degrees, 29 degrees, the ice cube's still the same. Then you warm it up to 30 degrees, still just an ice cube. 31 degrees, still an ice cube. But once you hit 30 to 32 degrees, the ice cube starts shrinking and melting. That's when the magic happens for that ice cube. Your habits are that way too. And that we don't need to make big, giant changes. We can make small changes, but do it every day. Try to get to be 1% better each day. And he says in the book that if you try to be just 1% better than you were the day before, after a solid year, you're 37 times better. But it also works in reverse, reverse with bad habits. <laughs> and bad habits can snowball too and make things worse for you. Uh, and so what we need to look about is to try to do um, small habits, make small changes and keep those changes going. Now, I've got a few more uh, comments. So I'm going to read these to see if someone else has something really great to say about Atomic Habits Chapter 1. Uh, Jamie, oh yeah, Jamie's the one who's lost 10 pounds in five weeks and she's been wanting to read this book and it's so worth it, Jamie. And it's an easy read. Um, okay, and Carrie talked about the ice melting. Donna says, I'm ordering this now on Amazon. You will not be sorry, Donna. You will absolutely love it. And there is a, um, oh, the version where they, they read it, where James Clear reads it to you. Um, you can find that on Audible because we have this on Audible as well as um, as a paperback. And so uh, so those of you that are really busy, you can listen to it on your way to work or on the way to the store. Um, excellent, excellent, excellent book. You truly you guys will all thank me when you're done reading it because it is so good. Uh, Carrie says mastery requires patience on page 21. All the little things will add up. And we'll start seeing results. It may take a while, but it will happen. You are so right, Carrie. I actually, um, I probably highlighted that. Yes. Productivity compounds. And it really does. They give an example in chapter one about, um, uh, in Britain, they had a, a bike club that was trying to go to the Olympics. And, and for the last hundred years, 
um, uh, Britain didn't have anybody. They think they only, only one time they won the Olympics in any of the games. And no one had ever won Tour de France. No one in Britain had. And uh, they hired a new coach. And that new coach said, you know what? What's more important than the goal of we want to win the Olympics, uh, we want to have someone win the Tour de France, what's more important than a goal is the process to get there. Because guess what? All the Olympians want to win. All the people who are in Tour de France want to win. What we're going to work, what he decided he was going to work on with the um, Britain cyclists was small things that could make a difference. And he did a whole bunch of small things with the team. He did things like um, putting alcohol on the tires so they gripped the road a little better. Um, changed what uniforms they wore. Instead of uh, wearing the outside, the uniforms they'd wear when pedaling outside, they also have, um, I guess they have bike races indoors. I don't follow biking, but um, the outfits that they would wear when pedaling indoors, they noticed were lighter fabrics. So he had everyone on their team wear the indoor outfits outside. He did things like, um, oh, something where, uh, something warm, put something warm on their shorts that made their muscles warmer. Um, they, oh, he even studied each individual cyclist what mattress and pillow would make that individual cyclist be able to sleep better and get a better night's sleep. And so he did all these teeny tiny things and it was amazing. Hey, Jeff. Hey. <laughs> what you doing? I was just listening to my, my Audible book. Uh, oh, of Atomic of Habits. habits. Yeah. Oops. Yay. Very cool. Do you have anything to share? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was listening to what you were saying about the small things. One small thing for me is I'm wasting this time when I'm driving to work, just listening to the radio and I can actually have this on in the car. It talks to me through the speaker so I can, I can drive and I can listen to the book at the same time. Which would be a great idea. The last time we read this book, Jeff lost 72 pounds. It, was, it wasn't the next day. Well, yeah. It took, it took time. It took time, but he yeah. did. And he's kept a lot of that weight off. Not all of it, but a lot of it off. You'll be able to see. I've been um, I've been doing videos on this channel for four years. And four years ago, he was his very heaviest. And so you'll be able to see what he looks like at his maximum weight in some of the videos there. And uh, he also did some fun um, non-scale victory uh, videos and uh, that were kind of fun, too. And you could see what he looked like when he was at his very skinniest. I'm still down 25 pounds. Oh, that's all that you've kept off? So. I know. You know what? It's my fault. Because you know where you can have good habits and you can also do bad habits slowly? Jeff got bladder cancer. Um, we found out the day before Thanksgiving. It was hard to exercise during that. Yeah. And they told him he couldn't exercise. We couldn't do our special marital relations anymore until he got his cancer uh, taken care of. So I needed ways to love him and to make him feel better. And I'm half Italian, so I was loving him with food. It mostly started during that vacation there. Well, if we had, yeah. If we had worked on our atomic habits and just fallen back on those, I think we would have been fine. Anyway, don't wear headphones while you're driving. You need mm -hmm. to be able to hear emergency vehicles. I'm okay. going to go back. you going to go back. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, Jeff and I were both doing great. We were doing, we had special atomic habit, little things that we were doing every day for months. I mean, it, I don't know, like over six months, we were just so great and in the zone. And then we went on vacation with our family and got one of those air verbos, like an Airbnb, but it's extra big house. And we were like eating and drinking constantly for a week. And when we came back home, it was hard to get back to doing our wonderful little habit processes that we were doing. It was like, well, we'll start writing down what we eat next week. 
oh, we'll go back to exercising next week. And then it was the next week and the next week and the next week. And before you know it, we fell back into our old bad habits. And that was terrible. And so we're working really hard right now on both of our health. And we want to put these atomic habits into place and keep them there and be really working on what's the journey like and try to enjoy the journey and not just look at a weight goal. And we got some more comments. Let's see if someone else has something that they that they really enjoyed from the Atomic Habits book. Oh, but right before Jeff came in, the um, that Britain British uh, cycling group they did all those little small changes. And it was a whole bunch of itty bitty little things, but they did them every single day. And they won the Olympics. They got, I think, 60% of the gold medals after five years of, of him being a coach. They, um, uh, one person won the Tour de France for the first time. And then the next year, someone else won the Tour de France. And at the time that this book was written, Wow, those British cyclists went from being mediocre and just meh, they did okay, not great, not fabulous, just meh. All of a sudden, they were world champions. They did so amazing. But it was all the itty-bitty, teeny little things that they did on the process, and they worked on their process, and that made a difference. Okay, let's see. Um... And Jamie says she's um, getting tonight on Kindle. Yeah, I bet you can get this book on Kindle too. And sounds like an amazing book for us. Oh my gosh, it is so good. And um, Carrie says, Jeff is funny. Love his personality. Thanks, I love him too. He's my sweetie pie. Uh, and um, Taz's mom says, you are truly one of the most amazing positive person on YouTube. Oh, thank you. I sense you are spiritually grounded blessed by this channel. Thank you so much. Actually, I started Anchor Moments um, when I wrote my Anchor Moments book uh, in 2019. And um, Anchor Moments are those special times in your life when you have felt God's loving presence. And I, um, I just want you guys all to know I have this special positivity in my heart right now. It was a scary week. It was a very scary week because I've not had a surgery in 25 years since I had my son with a C-section. But I got two really great signs that God was with me. One, the gynecologist that I saw, the second one, I had to kind of fire the first one. But the second gynecologist that I saw, uh, she was like crazy busy. Everybody wants her because she's so wonderful. And I wasn't supposed to have my first visit with her until April 30th. And today is April 14th. And I've already had my surgery. Um, when I set up that appointment, the front desk staff said, because I was like, oh, my gosh, I was supposed to have my surgery March 20th. That's kind of scary because I, if I do have cancer, I don't want it to hit my lymph nodes. I really want to get it out as fast as possible. And she said, you know, you can keep calling back. And if she ever has a cancellation, you can um, you can uh, we'll get you that appointment. So I said, OK. And so I called like three or four times and I thought, oh, I don't want to feel like I'm the nagging person that's constantly calling. So I just kind of gave up and thought, ah, I'll see her April 30th and hopefully I'll get my surgery um, before the summer. <clears throat> well, Jeff, the day before Good Friday, that Thursday on Holy Thursday, Jeff said, Gina, did you call your doctor's office to see if you can get an appointment? And I said, no, I didn't do that yet today. And he said, do it right now. And I'm like, oh, all right. So, and Jeff comes home for lunch. He works two miles from our house. And so I um, called during Jeff's lunch. And usually someone answers the phone at my new gynecology office because they're so fabulous. And, um, but this time it rang for a little bit and then it went to voicemail. And as soon as it started voicemail, I hung up. And I told Jeff, oh, nobody answered. They must be really busy today. And he's like, okay. He goes to work. 15 minutes later, they call me back. And a sweet lady on the phone says, are you okay? We saw that your phone number called our office. And then you hung up before you left a message. And we want to be sure you're all right. And I was like, wow. Well, thanks. I was just calling to see if you got my... Um, all my medical records from my primary doctor. And they said, well, let me check. 
And then they checked, came back a minute later and said, yeah, we got all your stuff. And I said, great. Any chance that um, the doctor has any availability? And she looked, someone had just canceled. And I got to have an appointment on Good Friday, first thing in the morning at 7.30 in the morning. Jeff works for the school district here in town. And the school district happened to have Good Friday off. They called it a spring holiday. So I got to take Jeff with me to that visit. And that doctor was just as fabulous as everyone said in her five-star reviews. And, um, and I told her, I actually gave her a copy of the book. And I said, you need to read chapter one of Anchor Moments because I know that God is with me because he gives me big signs at Easter. Jeff was going to be a Catholic priest. And so he was in seminary for a year or for a couple of years. And then he took a year's leave of absence. And we shared, he, we met during that year's leave of absence. And we shared our first kiss on the eve of Easter. Then we got married two years later at Easter time. But I was always a little scared of God. And I was afraid that... Um, God would have been disappointed because Jeff would have been a fabulous priest. He's such a good guy. And God knew that that was heavy on my heart. So I've had two babies five years apart within days of Easter. After that second baby was born at Easter time, I knew God is so with me and he is smiling at me from heaven. And he knows that um, he meant for Jeff to be my husband and for us to be together. And our kids are amazing. They've grown up to be just the greatest, sweetest adults. And um, so anyway, and when my book came out, it came out on March 26th at Easter time. I got to be on a friend's show. She was on a Christian show um, from Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network. And she let me be a guest and share about my book. And um, the owners were there and they said, oh, my goodness, Gina, we just love you. And we don't have anyone Catholic on our channel. We have a lot of different flavors of Protestant, but we don't have anyone Catholic. And we know God sent you to us to be a Catholic voice on our channel. And um, they gave me a show. And I signed a one-year contract for Anchor Moments with Gina LeBenz on Good Friday in 2019. So anyway, Easter is, Easter is my thing. And to have that doctor's visit on Good Friday, um, no matter what happens, I know God can see me and he knows what's going on. And he just wanted me to know that he's there for me. And then when I went on Wednesday morning, sorry, I don't want to cry. But when I went on Wednesday morning to the hospital, I was a little nervous because I haven't had a surgery other than, you know, my two C-sections with my kids. And um, we we were one of the first surgeries of the day. I got there, arrived at six in the morning and they have you sign in and, um, and there's a sticker and the stickers are numbered. And it's kind of funny because there's two numbers side by side. I was the 11th patient and the sticker said 1111 and, um, if you ever look at my um, at my branding, I have an anchor kind of a little bit on its side. And at the very top of the anchor is a clock. And the time on the clock is 1111. Um, 11 was Jeff's mom's favorite number. And after she passed away, whenever it says 1111 on the clock, we feel like she's with us. And so we always look up to heaven and we say, hi, Mary. And um, and I signed in and I got to be the 11th 11, the 11 11 on the sticker. So I, I know things are going to be okay. Even if I have cancer, it's going to be okay. I'm going to somehow get through it. And however it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be. But I'm always going to be here for my audience on Anchor Moments because we need to be here for each other. And I started a, a, a menopause playlist too because. I am 57 years old, and I'm discovering that um, being on Manjaro is really helpful on menopause, and women don't talk about menopause hardly. We just talk about hot flashes and night sweats, and that's about it. 
but there's so much more to it. And in the 13 weeks that I was taking my shot once a week, my night sweat stopped, my um, hot flashes stopped. But this week, I mean, it's gotten hotter because I'm in Arizona right now and, and we hit the 90s this week. But um, I did have a hot flash. And at night, I'm waking up kicking off the covers. So I'm really excited to take my shot again on Monday. And I'm researching a lot about menopause and I'm researching a lot about um, Manjaro and how it affects with menopause. So for any ladies or gentlemen, you know, you got wives um, or moms, or and I know you got a mom, you know, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't come out of an egg. You, you all have a mother and, um, and you might even have a big sister and they need to know things like if you bleed after 12 months of not bleeding, you have to see your doctor because that can be at the first sign of, of some female cancers. And that's really important. Okay. I got off track and I got some more uh, tips here. So I am going to read what you guys have to say, uh, especially if you've read Atomic Habits. And if you haven't, don't worry, get the book because we will do this again next Sunday. I'll try to be better on time. I was just trying to see if I could do this stream yard thing because then I can take your comments and I can put it on the screen big so everybody can read it better and it'll come up big. But um, anyway, it's it's a it's a new program that I that I've got to learn and Jeff has got to learn so we can figure out how to do it. But let's see. Um, let's see what some of you have to say. Um, Carrie says, I agree, Taz. I love Gina's channel. Such a blessing. Oh, thank you so much, Carrie. Taz says, love it. Ah. Love that God is so good. He is so good all the time. And um, I was a uh, Methodist before I became Catholic. And do you know, when my daughter had her first communion, um, she was in a white gown and a white veil. And I was able to go, oh my goodness, I wore a white gown and a white veil when Jeff gave me my first communion on the altar on our wedding day. And I didn't know what a big deal that was, but it really was, and just extra special. I also chair a lot of interfaith uh, prayer breakfasts in uh, the town that I'm in, and the mayor interfaith prayer breakfast. I do a lot of that. And I truly believe that we have a loving God who loves everyone, period. Everyone, everyone in the world. There's not a person in the world that God doesn't love. And I truly believe that with my heart. Okay. Um, oh, and Carrie says that is the most precious story. Thank you. And Taz's mom says, you are the princess of the king of kings. Oh, thank you. And yes, me too. I'm 56 menopausal and I had hyperplasia. Okay. And, but you're good now. Good. I'm so glad you're good now. Um, and um, and Jamie says, I'm 45 and perimenopause, and it's definitely been helping me too. It really has. And you guys, they're going through studies right now that um, HRT, hormone, hormone replacement therapy, there was a study a long time ago that they called the WHI, and they thought that, uh-oh, uh, if people are doing... Um, uh, hormone replacement therapy, uh, there's a rise in breast cancer. And so um, doctors stopped prescribing it. And um, one, wait, no, four out of every 1,000 women get breast cancer. But women who were taking um, estrogen, it went up to five out of every 1,000. So it was one one extra person. So from four to five. But they also studied that didn't hit the news was that women who took progesterone and um, estrogen together with their treatments, it went down. So instead of four out of every woman out of a th or four out of a thousand women getting uh, breast cancer, it went down to three out of every woman in a thousand. 
So there's um, a lot of gynecologists now that are looking into ways that we can maybe um, start doing more HRT and uh, really studying how it affects people. And one lady, she's absolutely fabulous. And I want to get StreamYard so I can I can put her on um, Manjaro Monday and have her talk to us. Dr. Susan Bryan, she did a video this last week about what a difference it makes for women on menopause to also be taking Manjaro or semaglutide, Ozempic, that but, um, it's actually helping women out. And I can tell you for myself, and I'll always lay it out there for you, what's going on with me. And for me, it takes care of my hot flashes um, so far anyway. I mean, we'll, we'll see on a 115 degree day in Arizona, we get those. But um, I already noticed it this week coming back. So I'm really wanting to take my shot on Monday. Okay, back to the book. Let's see. Um Oh, Jeff says, because he's Anchor Moments RV, that's our second YouTube channel. I forgot my most helpful atomic habit was just entering my food in a tracker, my fitness pal. That really made me conscious of how much I'm eating. I can tell you right now, being uh, Jeff's wife, if Jeff is keeping track and writing down what he eats, he loses weight and he does great. The second he doesn't, he is, I call him Mr. Crunch and Munch. He will snack from the second he gets home from work until he puts his head down on a pillow. And so that atomic habit of just writing down what he's eating is huge. And that is an atomic habit, a part of my process that I want to do too. And I also started with celebrations that um, I'm on celebration days, I'm eating whatever the celebration stuff is. I'm not going to uh, abstain from food. I'm going to enjoy the celebration. Like the baby shower for my daughter last Saturday, I had cake. And when the party was over, I had a second piece of cake while I was cleaning up. And then when I was done with that piece of cake, I chopped the cake up into big pieces. And I went over to neighbors' homes and rang the doorbell and said, here, here's some cake. And got it all house, out of the house. So Saturday night when we went to bed, there was no more cake. And it was a Costco cake. And there was half of the cake was leftovers. And we got it out. And you know what? It made a difference. And then the day after, uh, the day after that, I started writing down my food again on Sunday. And, um, and then on Monday, when I weighed myself, I was down a pound. I couldn't believe it. And that's when I was down 18 pounds on my 13th week. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to be discussing this even more. I want you to be thinking, what are, what's something you can do that's even like a 1% change that you can do this week and keep doing it and keep doing it. And then you'll think of another 1% change and let it build and see what happens. And you can share it with us during these uh, on the Manjaro Monday lives, you can share it, but we'll also do uh, one chapter a week on Sunday nights with the Atomic Habits because I'm more likely to be on time um, because Jeff doesn't work on Sundays. So uh, I was shooting for five o'clock Arizona time, but it was more like 520, when I, 520, 525 when I got on. And that's uh, 720 or, you know, so if I'm on at five o'clock, that's seven o'clock um, Illinois time. I'm originally from Illinois, <laughs> Midwest time, Central time, and um, eight o'clock um, Eastern Standard time. But we'll do one chapter each week. Um, let's see. Okay. And then Jennifer Holman says, you look great. Love your hair. Hi, happy to be here in the book club. Yay. We're glad to have you in the book club, Jennifer. And Tiaz's mom says, thank you, Jeff. I'm not taking any since I can't. So it's been an interesting road. Yeah, it's so hard when you can't get your shot. It is so, so hard because all those feelings of hunger and food thoughts come back. So we need to have a good process of some good habits in place to help us get through that bump on the road before we can get our medication again. And um, oh, and Carrie asked if my book is on Amazon. It is. That's where you find it. It's paperback and it's also in a Kindle ebook on Amazon. Ah, and my name is Gina LeBenz. So if you do Anchor Moments with Gina LeBenz in, in the book section, you'll be able to find it. I also have it um, a link to it in the description 
of all of my videos. Um, let's see. Um, Martha Robinson says, hi, just started taking Ozempic, getting ready to go on third week. How long does it take to lose weight? You know, that's a good question. Kind of like that ice cube melting. Uh, it depends. It's a little bit different for everybody. Some people lose weight right away on Ozempic and Manjaro. For some people, it takes, it takes a little bit longer. What you need to do is make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Ask your doctor, because I know you have a doctor or you couldn't have Ozempic. Same thing with Manjaro or Zepbound. You need to ask your doctor, how many ounces of water should you be shooting for in a day? My doctor said shoot for at least 100 ounces to a gallon. And that's what I've been doing. Also ask your doctor, how much protein should I be eating in a day? Because protein is really key, especially when you can't find your medication. Protein will help you keep uh, a little bit fuller longer. And so will um, high fiber vegetables. And so, um, but ask how much protein you should have. I know registered dietitians say about 30 grams uh, three times a day for about 90 grams. And I've been shooting for 90 to 100 grams of protein. But ask your doctor, maybe there's a, a different amount that you should be taking. But um, it, once you're really drinking your water and if you can get some movement, I know some people um, may have some different body aches and pains and and some things that'll make it hard to move at the beginning, but find different ways you can get more movement in your life, either swimming, um, walking. Uh, the YMCA that I worked at used to have a um, special kind of bicycle for people in wheelchairs that they could, um, they put their pedals on their hands and then they moved the pedals like this with their arms. And you can really work up a sweat doing that. And it, uh, raises your blood pressure or, you know, uh, so you can burn calories while you do it. So, um, or watching things on TV, uh, on, uh, YouTube, you know, catch some videos, even sit and be fit. Anything that you can do where you're getting some extra movement and that will help you to lose weight too. But you can start losing weight on a Zempic the, the, it's possible to lose it the first week, same with Manjaro Zepbound, or, or it might take you just a little bit longer. Just, um, do the best you can and stick with it and you'll do just fine. Um, Carrie says it's your book on Amazon. Yep. would love to read it. Thank you. Yes, it is on Amazon. Martha, it took me the first week. It's a process. Trust the process for sure. Absolutely. And that is, that is what they mentioned in chapter one of Atomic Habits, that it's not just your goal. Everybody has a goal to win. Uh, you know, like athletes, they all have a goal to win, but it's the athletes that work on their process that are more likely to win because they make positive changes. And it's that process that, um, that they make big gains in and help them to reach their goals. Um, Martha says, uh, okay, because I noticed that it has not curved my appetite yet. Oh, you know, there's different, um, when they first start you on uh, Ozempic and Manjaro and Zepbound, and Wagovi, they start you on a smaller dose. So that way your body can get used to it because some people have vomiting. If you have vomiting and diarrhea, that is so incredibly miserable. So they want to start you on a low dose to get your body used to it. And then they can up the dose. And then as your doses get upped and you're eating protein, you're drinking your water, you're having vegetables, uh, your appetite will, will um, start to go away. Um, Yep, Taz says the same. Uh, Taz's mom says the same thing. Lots of protein, low carb, and lots of water. Martha says, "Okay, thank you, and God bless you." And Taz says, "God bless you as well. You got this." And Robin says, "I'm going to order it." All right, yay! And um, we're going to do Atomic Habits first because this book is so good, so important. Um, but when we're done with that book, you know, maybe I'll do a book study on uh, my anchor book. It's really easy though. Uh, the print is big. I wrote this book for people who don't like to read. So that way they can get the message and they can finish it in an afternoon. But we'll do it in little chapters too, just to make it fun. Okay, but we're going to do Atomic Habits first. All right. Okay, I have been talking for about an hour. I don't see any other questions from people who've read the first chapter of Atomic Habits. Go ahead, go out there, get the book, 
it's it's an easy read because he tells stories, you know, like telling the stories of the coach of the British cyclist and telling the story where he almost died getting hit in the head with that baseball bat. I mean, it was bad. It broke his nose and and did more. It was crazy bad. And I'm so glad he lived. And I'm so glad that he didn't give up. He had a positive attitude. And he made sure he did just a little bit more than he could do before. And he just built on all those small habits. And then it just blossomed into wonderful atomic habits that made a huge difference in his life. And it's made difference in other people's lives too. And I know I started slipping into some bad habits and I need to get right back on to my good habits because I'd like to lose a lot of weight. There's a bunch that I could lose and I know it'll it'll keep me healthier and I want to be healthy for my grandkids and I got one on the way. So that is it. Oh, good. A couple more comments. Cindy says, good book, just changes of only 1% make a change and a huge difference. That's right, Candy. And Jennifer says, I got Atomic Habits in the spiral book form, and I love to take notes and easy read. Looking forward to this. My habit this week, 20 extra grams of protein a day at breakfast. Oh my gosh. When you get that protein at breakfast, that is great. That's going to set you off for your day to be fueled in a really positive way. So uh, awesome, Jennifer. And let us know next week how it went. All right. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, Thank you, everyone who's come on and uh, check out the different playlists on my channel. I've got a type two diabetes playlist. I have um, lots of different playlists that are that are kind of fun, including my Manjaro journey, um, menopause and um, and now the atomic book. And I'll put all the videos there, too. So you'll be able to find it easier. Okay. Have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow night when I take my week number 14 shot. Bye-bye.